Hey everybody and welcome to my second of two videos on this, the Olympus OM4. This is an OM4T, but this, everything we're going to talk about applies to the 4, the 4T, and the 4Ti as well. First thing we're going to talk about is how to mount and unmount lenses. To take a lens off, there's a little button right here. All you're going to do is push it and turn the lens counter or anti-clockwise until it comes off. Set that there, grab our other lens. And then to put the new lens on, you just want to look for this red dot and that red dot. There we go. And now you've got your new lens. Next thing we're going to do is load and unload film. To load the film, all you have to do is open the back. There we go. We're going to grab our roll of film, drop it into the film cassette area. Make sure that this is all the way down. Pull out a bit of a leader, put it into the film take-up spool. There we go. Come on. All right, we've advanced it. We're ready to go. Next thing you want to do is adjust the ISO dial. So we're going to adjust this to 200. Now the ISO and the exposure value compensation dial, they're linked. So you want to make sure that that says the ISO number there and that that little white dot lines up with that center line. If you're adjusting the ISO dial and that white dot doesn't line up with that center line, you're not actually adjusting the ISO. You are keeping it at the same ISO that you had before because you're showing that number and then exposure compensating. So make sure that you have your ISO number there that's correct and that this, this is correctly aligned. Now, once you have that, we're going to take up any tension or any slack rather in the film. There's none in this one. And then we're going to advance three frames until we get to frame one right there. Now, in the real world, you'd leave your camera like this or change modes, do whatever you want to do. Take all of your rolls of film or all your frames on this roll of film, hit the re rewind button and rewind it until you get it all the way into the camera. But this is not the real world. I'm going to open up the camera back and show you what's happening with the film. If you do this in, with real film, you will ruin it because film is one and done. And once it's exposed to light, it can't be used again. So when you take a picture, you actuate the shutter. You can see the film coming out of the cassette being guided by these guide pins into this upper and lower set of guide rails. And then the in interior guide rails, you can see through the sprocket holes right here, and the film pressure plate holds them down like that to keep the film flat. Here's the take-up sprocket that we advance through, just like that. And because this doesn't roll backwards, this can't be, the film can't be pulled back to cause overlapping frames. Okay, great. So we've gone through our entire roll of film, let's say. Again, remind, reminder, you keep the film back closed the whole time. Push the rewind button, and now you can start rewinding the film. That's the sound that you want to listen for to let you know you're almost done. And in real, the real world, of course, you want to rewind this the whole way, but I'm going to reuse this film for another video. So we'll set this off to the side. And then once you've taken that out after rewinding the film, you just drop your next cassette in if you're going to keep on shooting. All right, let's change the battery. Um, my battery thing is a little bit chewed up, and you can see here I had to drill holes in it to take it off with a spanner wrench last time. Let's see if I can get it off with a nickel today. Oh, I can. Okay. Good, because I didn't want to go get my spanner wrench. So this camera takes two 357 LR44 A76 batteries, whatever you want to call them, these little button cells. And they go with the positive terminal to the base of the camera. The negative terminal, which has no writing on it, goes down inside. There we go. Then once you've got those in, you just take the battery cap. There we go. Screw it in and you're set. That's how you change the batteries. The next thing we're going to talk about is something that uh, I think the manual describes very poorly. And that's how to adjust the diopter. The, dio the manual says to look through the viewfinder, if you don't wear glasses, the, without your glasses, and then adjust this until the 
meter screen is in focus. I tried that. It's possible that it did not work for me because I wear glasses and the prescription is stronger than these. So even with my glasses on, every single setting I tried looked sharp. So I set it to the one that looked the sharpest. I was way off. The way that I adjusted the diopter was that I set the camera up on a tripod. I got out the longest telly I have for Olympus, which is a 300. If you have a 135, that'll work just fine. You can do it with a 50, it's a little bit harder. Then what I did was I set the focus on the lens to infinity, and I adjusted the diopter until I could make out the branches and the trees that I was focusing on, which were across an airport tarmac, so they were definitely at infinity focus. I strongly recommend doing it that way with a, a telephoto lens or a 50 if you don't have a telephoto and focusing at infinity and adjusting this until infinity is sharp because I found that to be significantly more reliable than doing it the way the instruction manual said. But if you don't wear glasses, the instruction manual could be right for you. It just definitely was not for me. And so a dozen rolls of, films told, rolls of film told me it was very frustrating. Anyway, oh yeah, in my notes it even says the directions in the manual are okay if you don't wear glasses, but impossible if you do wear glasses. So, oh, there we go. Okay, solve that mystery. Flash use. We're gonna talk about using a flash on the Olympus OM4. This is the hot shoe. You can put a flash on here, and uh, some of the Olympus, like the uh, F280 flash, will do high-speed sync on here, only on here. I believe, maybe with this proprietary port. Don't quote me on that. At any rate, um, you can use a flash on here. It's an X flash, any modern flash will work just fine. You also have a PC port down here that you can use if for off-camera flash work. Uh, when you use a flash, what you want to do is set it to 1 60th or, or slower. If you look at your OM4, you'll notice that 1 60th is in blue so is everything out to one second. Blue indicates the speeds at which you can use flash. The red ones are the mechanical speeds. You can also use the flash at those speeds. The white speeds are ones for which flash is only available in high speed sync with the F280 flash. So why is it? Why is the flash only available at those speeds? So the way that a, a focal plane shutter works is that uh, so let's say that what you're looking at here is, is what you're going to take a picture of with a flash your shutter curtains are here you take a picture first one opens and then after some period the second one closes and then when you advance the film they reset just like that okay so at 1 60th of a second the first one opens and stops and then the entire image area is exposed to the light for a very brief second during which the flash is triggered and then it closes and it's it's actually much shorter than a second because it's a fraction of a second but you get my point it's very quick second curtain closes and then it comes back so let's say you're taking a picture at one half of a second first curtain opens this stays open for basically a half of a second and then the second one closes and when you advance the film they reset well what if you're taking a picture at one two thousandth of a second first one opens and then the second one follows very closely behind. So it's not that the curtains physically move faster for the shutter speeds. They always move at the same speed, but for the ones beyond a 60th of a second, even 1 1 25th, there's only a partial frame that's exposed at any given time as the curtains move. So if you take a picture at something like 1 2000th, it'll trigger somewhere along here, and you'll just end up with a little sliver of your frame exposed and everything else will be blank because it'll be covered by the curtain. So when you, a couple of tips for using your flash. When you take flash photos, if you're gonna put, it on, put your flash on the hot shoe, try to point it directly up. You wanna bounce your light up and back down at the subject to get a more flattering look. If you have your flash on the hot shoe and then the light, the flash just points forward, everyone's gonna look like wax if you're taking pictures of them. So it's a good idea to have this uh, hot shoe flash pointing upward. Ideally, if you're going to use a flash, you'll have your camera here, connect to the PC port, and then your flash will actually be up here and down, off to the side and above the, the, the camera, pointing down. 
and that's going to give you the most flattering lighting when you take pictures, especially of people, but of any subject when you use a flash. So the next thing we're going to do is take a look at what you would see when you look through the viewfinder. What you're looking at right now is a, a drawing I, I put together that shows what the viewfinder displays when you look through it. And it's a pretty wide open viewfinder. It's very nice looking. There's just the uh, um, shutter speed indicator along the bottom and, and you have the shutter speeds from one second at the right to one two thousandth on the left and then a bar that lights up and shows you what shutter speed you're going to use. If you use the spot metering then every time the first time you hit spot the word spot will appear in the top right and then every time you take a meter reading a new diamond will appear showing what that meter reading was. Then the bar will advance to the point of the shutter speed that it's going to give you. And what it's doing is every time you take a meter reading up to eight meter readings, it's averaging all of those readings to come up with an, a single reading that is the best one for the exposure that you've given it. And that's, that's it. That's what's in the viewfinder. It's, it's really a, a simple but very informative viewfinder that tells you exactly what you need and nothing else. And whenever you don't use the spot meter, this is an average meter. So that's what, it's, uh, that's what it defaults to unless you use the spot meter settings. But now let's say that you are taking a picture of something that's extremely white or extremely black, okay? Or uh, because, because you have an averaging meter, if you're taking a picture just of this lens cap zoomed in to where it's just completely black, right? The averaging meter is gonna try to turn this gray. But if you want this to be black instead of gray, then you hit the shadow button, and that's going to underexpose your images a little bit so that your grays become black. Let's say you're taking a picture of this backdrop that I'm using here, and you want it to be white. Well, your averaging meter is going to try to make this gray. So you hit highlight, and that's going to overexpose by two stops to then make all of your whites white. And I'm using air quotes for this because it's, it's not actually over or under exposing the image, it's, it, it's upping the exposure to compensate for the way that the meter sees color and tries to uh, adjust meter readings to make everything gray. So that's how the, the, the shadow and the highlight work. The spot meter takes up to eight readings and averages them for the best possible reading. So let's say you were looking at this scene, let's talk about how to use the spot meter. If you didn't trust your averaging meter and you wanted to take this picture exactly, you could take a spot reading here, and here, and here, and here, and here, here on the red as well, and then a couple more on the, the white. And what's going to happen is that it'll take all eight, up to eight of those readings and average them. So if this is f4 and one second, and this is f4 and uh, one sixtieth of a second, right? And this is F4 and one one thousandth of a second. It's going to take that data and come up with the most average reading to give you an exposure that will most closely represent the scene that you're seeing. And so when you use multi-spot to give yourself readings, it's going to only use the center 12% or 3% of the frame. It's about like that. If you have the split prism um, focusing screen, then that center circle is what the spot meter is reading. But if you use it to take readings off of areas with different tones and shadows and things like that, then what it's basically doing is giving you a zone system calculation in the camera so you don't have to calculate it yourself. The other thing you can do is just take a single reading. Let's say that you're looking at this scene. Okay. This is really way bright, and this is a nice middle tone, and this is really way dark. If you took a reading off of here, this would be gray, and all of this would be washed out. If you took a reading here, this would be gray, and all of this would be dark except the white backdrop. So if you took a reading off of here on the red, or off of this part of the prism right here, which are kind of middle tones, then you could force the camera to override the average meter reading here, which would be biased because of all of this white backdrop space, and get a precise meter reading, and then whatever you read would be your middle tone gray. 
So then this would be lighter than this, this would be darker than this. And what you're doing is telling the camera, I know you have a good meter, but I want you just to focus on this one part of it and make that the middle gray. So I'll put a link in the description of this video to my zone system video that explains how all that works. And basically the spot meter is what you do if you take a single reading to force a specific tone to become zone five. And if you take multiple readings, then it calculates all of those readings together to give you the best exposure. That's the spot meter, it's fantastic. It's like my favorite thing to use now. So let's put everything together and go through the process to take a picture with the Olympus OM4. So first thing we're gonna do is just take an average meter reading. You look through here, adjust your shutter, your aperture, we're in auto mode, focus, take your picture, and we're good to go. If you're in manual mode, then you're gonna look through here and you're gonna adjust your shutter, your, your aperture, and then the bar in it will come up to a point that will tell you what shutter speed to use. So you just have to adjust your camera till it gets to that shutter speed, whatever that shutter speed is, and take your picture in advance. Back into auto mode, if you wanna use the spot meter function, then you use it just as we described. Take your spot reading, take your picture, and advance just like that. Pretty straightforward. It's mostly just focusing and adjusting a couple of settings and taking the picture. What about double exposures? Those are a little bit more fiddly with this camera. So what you wanna do, let's say that your, your meter reading tells you that your proper exposure is 1 1 25th of a second at f5.6. Okay, great. If you're just to take a, sim a single, oops, a single reading and a single exposure that would be properly exposed. Now, what we're doing now is I'm showing you how to do it in manual mode first. If you want to do a double exposure, you have to cut the amount of light in half. Well, that's a shutter speed, which is twice as fast. So twice as fast from 1 1 25th is 1 2 50th. Take your first picture. Don't advance all the way. Push the rewind button down. Hold the rewind knob like that and advance. Now take your second and advance without holding anything. Next thing you need to do is take a dead frame. I like to do that by putting the lens cap on, setting to F16, going to the fastest shutter speed. And you wanna take a dead frame because when you start advancing the film after your double exposure, it takes a couple of seconds, well, not a couple of seconds, it takes a little bit of advance time before the film starts moving again. So it might not advance the whole frame. And that means that if you don't take a dead frame, then you're, you risk having your double exposure partially overlap with your next frame and potentially ruining both of them. So a dead frame is a really good way to protect the time and investment you've put into your double exposure. But what about in auto mode? So let's say same thing. F5.6, 1 1 25th of a second, you're in auto mode. But if you adjust your shutter speed dial in auto mode, nothing happens whatsoever until you get down to the mechanical speeds. Well, what you need to do is use the exposure value compensation dial. Here you can see it says plus, and up here it says minus. So minus means cutting the amount of light, plus means increasing it. If you're gonna do a double exposure, you need half as much light, so you want to minus one stop. Now you're in a position to go through the whole process of your double exposure and take your double exposure and get it properly exposed because you've now taken two shots that have half as much light as one shot, which is a properly exposed double exposure. Just remember to adjust it back that way when you're done. You can also adjust it like this, which is actually the way you're supposed to do it. <laughs> when you're using the EV dial, don't lift up on it. That's for changing the ISO. When you adjust your EV for uh, for your automatic double exposures, make sure that you do not lift the dial because the EV dial moves opposite of the direction of the ISO dial. It's a very strange assembly. I don't think the other ones work that way. Anyway, that's it. That's everything we had to talk about in the Olympus OM4. These are really fantastic cameras. Really love shooting mine. It's become one of my, one of my favorite cameras very quickly. 
um, very enjoyable to use. So if you have one of these, uh, it's very nice. You really have a very nice camera on your hands. Anyway, uh, if this video is helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm producing useful content, which is very helpful to you. If you'd like to subscribe, so you can find out when I have more videos about photography or about cameras, by all means, please do. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below in the comments section. Pretty good about responding fairly quickly. If you are a, an amateur photographer who's taken pictures with an OM4, by all means, please feel free to share a link in the comments section. And one last thing, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time we talk about other cameras or photographic techniques.